Father, thank you for the ministry of the Holy Spirit in the church and in our midst today. Thank you for the eternal purpose of God that is proposed for mankind. And thank you for the interpretation you are giving to your world in our hearts, preparing us for our heavenly home. But before we go home, making us to do our assignment so that when we meet our Lord, our Savior, our Redeemer, the one that loved us, we will be confident to bring reward unto him that all the talents and graces that God has given unto us, we will multiply it in other people and present them as gifts unto our loving Savior in the name of Jesus that we will not be ashamed before him at his coming that it might be well with us in the name of Jesus thank you father because you are God in Jesus name we pray and let everybody shout a big amen. amen I want to read one important scripture before we sit down this morning and uh, that is the book of first John chapter 2 I want to read from verse 24. 1 John chapter 2 from verse 24. Today I'm speaking unto you on seeking and saving the souls of the lost. Seeking and saving the souls of the lost. Or if you want another topic you can call it Preparing to take a gift back home to our master. Getting the package you will give to the master when you get home so that when we get there, we will receive well done, that good and faithful servant. Verse 24 says, Let that therefore abide in you which you have heard from the beginning. If that which you have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, you also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he had promised us, even eternal life. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing which you have received of him abided in you. And you need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things and is truth and is no lie and even as it had taught you you shall abide in him and now little children abide in him that when he shall appear we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming if ye know that he is righteous you know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. Let me join that quickly with the book of the, uh, the book of Daniel, the last chapter. That is chapter twelve. Daniel chapter twelve, and I'm going to read from verse two to verse four. Daniel chapter twelve, from verse two to verse four. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise will shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. But thou, O Daniel, Shut up the walls and seal the books, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Now, every time we talk about prosperity in the church, people are very happy, they are excited, they love it, they enjoy it, and thank God it is the plan of God for every one of us to be prosperous. And I pray the Lord will continue to prosper us in the name of Jesus. Every time you talk on the issue of marriage, especially amongst the youths, you see a lot of excitement. People want to hear about engagement. They want to hear about courtship. They want to hear about marriage. You know, everybody wants to love and be loved. 
You get so excited when you talk, can we kiss ourselves? Can we touch one another? How should I behave to this? Now, these are issues of life. They are good and they are very important. Every time we talk about answered prayers, people are excited in the church, you know, because everybody wants to pray and want his prayers to be answered. So, when we call unto the Lord and we say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just pray that this will do it. Now, people want to know how their prayers will be answered. They want what I can call the magic formula. How am I sure? How can I be sure that when I pray, God is going to answer my prayers? Now, when we talk about uh, success, people are excited about success. People are excited about healings, you know? When you teach on the principles of divine healing, how you can be healed from all sicknesses. Nobody wants to die, you know? Nobody wants to die. Everybody wants to live long. Everybody wants a way to enjoy life and to prosper and be in health and be in sound health. And Now, all these things are good. But that is not what I'm speaking on this morning. It is important for every one of us to understand that it is not only our joy and our excitement that should be very, very important to us in this journey of life. We should also think about the joy and the excitement of our Father and our God, the one who shed his blood on the cross of Calvary. Because Jesus must get a reward for his labor on the cross. I want everyone to think about that. Jesus must be rewarded. He paid a high price on the cross of Calvary, you know. It was such a very painful death that Jesus died. Wait, it will take eternity to comprehend the depth of the sufferings that Jesus suffered on the cross of Calvary. In fact, the Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 53 that he was mad than any other man. That when we shall see him, there is no beauty in him that we should desire him. You understand what I'm trying to say? He was so mercilessly beaten Jesus was maltreated. He was exposed to shame and ridicule. He was reduced to nothing. Reduced to nothing. He was messed up. He was uh, abandoned. He was rejected. And in the midst of all this, the people that he labored for three and a half years to train up, every one of, of them abandoned him. Are you getting what I'm saying? Only John showed up. By the time Jesus was crucified. Because by the time he was taken and arrested, all the disciples ran away. Even Peter, the one that Jesus loved and trusted most, denied him three times. The rest of them did not deny him, but they turned their back from him. They ran away. Are you getting my point? Until Jesus was crucified, that was when John was peeping. I hope there's no soldier around. And uh, he smuggled himself to get to the place where Jesus was crucified. And Jesus saw him immediately. And he said, Behold your mother, mother, behold your son. And they took themselves away. And Jesus was left alone on the cross of Calvary. What a painful thing. You know, I was just reading the Bible. And I discovered that Jesus was in such a precarious situation. The scriptures must be fulfilled in his life. The Bible says, Doth it behove Christ to suffer for him? And you know, Jesus had to die fast. Because if he did not die quickly, his problem will be complicated. Because that day was a day of preparation to the Passover. Are you getting my point? And nobody must remain on the cross by the Passover time. So, the people that crucified Jesus went back to Pontius Pilate for permission not only to kill the people, to crucify them, but they got permission to go and break the bones of their legs. Are you getting my point? And Pilate gave them the permission. They should go and crush the bones of their legs. When they got to the first thief, they discovered that he was still alive, you know, because he was used to suffering. So, they broke his bones. They got to the other man, they broke his bones. But by the time they got to Jesus, he was fast dead. He was completely dead. Even his death surprised them that he had died so quickly like that. Can you imagine the way the Son of God died? And every time I think of his death, every time I think of why he died, that the purpose of his death is to bring many sons unto glory. 
the question I always ask myself is this. What is the percentage of those of us who are born again in the world today compared with the population of the whole world? Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. This is a staggering t- statistics that gets me thinking and gets me worried and so troubled in my heart. Statisticians have said there are about 7 billion people in the world today. How many of you have known that? 7 billion people in the world today. And the population of the world is increasing at the rate of around 126 or 127,000 souls per second. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? So every second like this, about 127,000 people are born in the world. Are you getting me? 127,000 people are, done in the, are born into the world. And every second in the world, close to a hundred thousand people they said between 54,000 and a hundred thousand people die every second are you getting me so this since we have been in the church now more than 250,000 people have died they're just dying and as they are dying some other people are born but the good thing is that more people are born into the world than the number of people that are dying in the world are you getting my point now of the seven billion people in the world about one billion of them are muslims think about it are you getting my point how many muslims about one billion now in the world there are about one billion to 1.2 billion hindus in the world are you getting my point about a billion to a billion and two hindus in the world and most of them are concentrated in india they are concentrated in Bangladesh, some of them in Japan, few of them in China and uh, the Asian countries there. And uh, in, uh, in, in Taiwan and uh, in Thailand, that's where you have some of these Buddhists and uh, some Buddhism and uh, Hinduism. You have a lot of them in, the, in, in that area of the world. Now, that is Hindus. Now, the Buddhists also, they are close to between 500 million and a billion people in the world. Are you getting my point? So if the Muslims are 1 billion, the Hindus are around 1 billion to 1.2 billion, the Buddhists, Buddhism, the Buddhists are between 500 million and a billion people in the world. Are you getting my point? They say Christians are, those who carry the Bible, profess Jesus, they are around 2 billion people in the world. Are you getting my point? There are about 2 billion people in the world. And world statistics says that Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world. Are you getting me? By birth. Because one single Muslim man can have 10 wives. Are you getting me? But the Quran permits them to have 4 wives. But some of them, they have 10 wives. Now, it's not the number of wives, but the number of children they, birth, they give birth to. Some of them can give birth to 8 children, 10 children, 20 children are you getting my point some men amongst them have 40 children some have 50 some have 80 children they take joy and delight in the number of children that they have now majority of christians in the world are in africa or in europe or in america now in the average western world it is an average of one child per family are you getting what i'm trying to say maximum of two children so while the muslims are multiplying at least uh, by, by racial procreation while they are multiplying in geometrical progression christianity is only having mere addition in fact in europe the population is declining are you getting my point because over there in europe you have what the economists call aging population an aging population is an, a population where you have more older people than the younger ones because they are not giving back to children again are you getting what i'm trying to say they are not giving back to children again it's only in africa that christianity is growing by natural thing that is by birth but christianity by conversion they also said is the fastest growing religion by conversion uh, by, by conversion and by translation that is people changing their religion and coming to christianity christianity is the fastest religion but if you go to a place like india 
or you go to a place like japan and you are preaching to them to give their life to jesus they will tell you yes we're going to give our life to jesus but the question they are going to ask you is this now this jesus you are talking about is he the son of brahma or the son of uh, krishna or the son of shiva those are their own trinity like you have god the father and god the son and god the holy spirit brahma as far as the hindus are concerned is the god the father is like the god of creation are you getting what i'm saying shiva is like god the the holy spirit is the god of judgment and krishna is like god the son are you getting what i'm trying to say so all the other gods and idols are either sons of krishna brahma or shiva one of the things that god is doing today is raising up a generation of men and women that have a leading of the holy spirit that have an understanding of the word of god and they are in tune with the holy spirit men and women who are circumcised in their heart men and women that have that that, that that have laid down their lives on the cross of calvary who are ready to die for the cross of jesus men who are living for the truth men who are expecting the head of the church to come again are you hearing what i'm saying men and women who love god who love the word of god who love everything about god and who wants to follow the heart of god and i want to believe that this is the category of people that god expects us to belong to the bible calls them the virgin church the church that is not corrupt the church that is not polluted that is the kind of a church that jesus is coming for a glorious church without spot without blemish without wrinkle a church that is not corrupted a church that is not polluted a people who we are sinners but their sins have been washed with the blood of jesus now their names are written in the book of life and they are following emmanuel these are the people that god is relying upon in these last days to fulfill the purpose of god and to back the counsel of god in these last days god is looking for a generation of men and women that god can refer to as my own people people that i died for people that love me people that obey me people that love my name people that love my word people that love what i stand for these are the people i am speaking to this morning are you hearing what i'm saying here because if you release if, if you rely upon the religious world there is no hope for christianity in this world if you rely upon the religious men and women the congregational religious people if you rely upon them and depend upon them for the spread of the work of god i want to tell you men and women nothing is going to happen there the world is playing religion in the name of the lord the world is playing pranks the world the world seems to be playing gimmicks the world seems to be playing seems to be gambling with the name of the lord and the unfortunate thing is that the issue at stake is the issue of the future of humanity the future of the program of god and the souls of millions of men and women who are streaming to hell every day and that's why the bible says it seems as if hell is enlarging itself every day hell is enlarging itself every day coupled with the pro problem of the fact that in the church of god all over the world there are men and women who are born again who are filled with the holy spirit but they do not have the knowledge of god they don't know their left hand from their right hands and there are some who know the will of god but they are not prepared to do anything for god they are just lazy they are just complacent they don't want anything to be done through them they want some other people to do the work there are those who know what to do but they don't want to do it there are those who know where to go but they don't want to go there are men and women who have the ability they have the wisdom they have the grace god has given them the influence to proclaim the gospel and shout the alarms to the nations of the world or they don't want to tell anybody anything some of us do not understand the value of woman's soul do you know that the soul of one man in the presence of god worth more than the wealth of the whole universe put together are you getting what i'm saying here the value of the soul of one man 
the value of the soul of one woman, one person, what's more than the whole of the wealth of all the nations of the world? The world that fought two world wars. Are you getting my point? The world had fought two world wars. 1914 to 1918, we fought the first world war. After the world war, the Americans and some European nations came together and they formed what they called the League of Nations. And in the League of Nations, they believed that with the forming of the League of Nations, there shall be no war anywhere in the world again. That any problem that crops up in any nation of the world, that the League of Nations will rise up and profess solution. To the problem of humanity do you know that in the nations they trade with the souls of men i mean you you don't know that they trade with the souls of men they negotiate the souls of men and some of us do not know that it is in god and in jesus and in the living god of all uh, living church of god that our souls carry weight are you getting what i'm trying to say adolf hitler told the league of nations he said, they were meeting in Geneva and he told them if you give me a price I'm not going to launch the second world war and they said what was his price he said what he wanted was that they should give him Czechoslovakia if they can give him Czechoslovakia he was not going to carry out any war again and the United Nations said yes we are sure no more war by the time they were holding their meeting in Geneva the meeting of the League of Nations Adolf Hitler launched his war. He attacked Czech, the Pol Czechoslovakia. He attacked France. And by the time they knew what was happening, the soldiers of Germany had taken over Paris and the whole of France. And the world was left staggering. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? For four solid years, 1944 to 1948, one man in one nation, backed up by the devil, troubled the whole world. And you know what the devil does? Every time the devil wants to do something, he raises up men of like mind. Are you getting what I'm saying? To trouble the world and carry out the purpose of the devil so that the souls of so many people can be wasted. You know the number of people that died during the second world war? They said more than 200 million souls were wasted. There is nobody that is a good unbeliever. Every unbeliever is a danger to your life. And that is why God has laid it upon my heart to ask you and I this morning. Do you think we are doing well? The way we are handling the souls of men? The way we are handling the issue of soul winning and evangelism in our generation? Do you think we are winning the battle? Do you think we are doing well? Do you think we are telling the gospel and propagating the word of God in a good way enough that can convince the sinners and draw men and women to the, to the church? and to the presence of god do you think we are winning the bible do you think we are telling the truth in a good way enough 